Good morning, those of you joining us online. I'm going to go ahead and mute you all. We've got a full crew here in the studio. We'll quiet them down just a, in a moment. <laughs> there we go. All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. What a what a great, wonderful, beautiful group this morning. <laughs> Say if that's a little too tight, we could yeah, you ladies over a little bit and put one more here. Okay. And then uh, if that's, are you good there? That might be uh, more, a little bit more space. And then we're going to So how is everyone this morning? I know. <laughs> Little dip in temperature, so we'll uh, we'll get our bodies warmed up in no time. <laughs> it's a little chilly this morning. All right. <laughs> so lots of faces that I know. Some new faces. Welcome, I'm Nancy. For those who don't know, I teach here Monday mornings and Thursday mornings traditional form of yoga, hatha, we do a little vinyasa, maybe we'll do a little bit more vinyasa today <laughs> to warm up, but let's start in a comfortable seat to just do a little bit of grounding work this morning. So I put out a little reminder last week, obviously this class is getting some, uh, some people to come. <laughs> I highly recommend buying your own blocks. We have them here, but we are running out with this type of turnout. So they are so worth it to help your practice. So if you were lucky enough to get a block this morning, you can see Karen is sitting in what we call a hero's pose where you place, you stack a couple blocks under your seat and sit on the tower just like this. You can also sit cross-legged in what we call Sukhasana. Also on a single block, I wouldn't do it on two blocks, where you have your two little sit bones, those bony parts of your bottom. And that way your knees drop down toward the mat and we find a tall spine. So coming to a comfortable seat where you can find stillness, we'll be in it for about probably five minutes to tune into our breath. So soften the gaze or close the eyes completely. Take a deep inhale through the nose and sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> and then begin to allow the natural breath to just come in and out. Notice how the breath feels this morning in your body. Notice how you can bring your awareness to only the breath and maybe feel for just a moment that thoughts of a to-do list or thoughts of a conversation you are having this morning or plan to have later just dissipates and we're able to 
bring our awareness to one thing, and that's our breath. So coming together this morning, this auspicious day, a notable person in our history said, if we are to have peace on earth, our loyalties must become ecumenical rather than sectional. Our loyalties must transcend our race, our tribe, our class, and our nation. And this means we must develop a world perspective. It was Martin Luther King's Christmas sermon in Atlanta, Georgia, 1967. So Dr. King studied with Mahatma Gandhi at one point, used the learnings to help formulate the six principles of nonviolent resistance. And these principles that were formed decades, decades, decades ago, they form much of the anti-racist and civil rights work being done all over the world today. They give us an example as to how we may consistently I apologize. Where are they? <laughs> there we go. How we may practice diligence in our own lives in meaningful ways. So tying this in, in our yoga practice, the yoga sutras are an outline for our yoga practice. And it starts with the yamas and ahimsa, which means nonviolence without violence is right at the top. Patanjali transcribed <clears throat> this in the yoga sutras as a way of how we should do. They are affirmations of who we truly are. So therefore, when we act violently, we are acting in a way counter to our true nature. It is not in our true nature to harm or hurt other beings. But unfortunately, when we forget how to find that light within, how to tap our wholeness, we lose sight of our true nature. And then we let fight, flight, anxiety, stress be our first course of action, which often leads to violent ways. So we turn to our yoga practice, we turn to our breath, we turn to the physical, the mental, to find ways to tap what lies within our true nature. So bringing your hands to heart center right now and forming an intention for your practice this morning as it relates to this yama, ahimsa. It lies at the very core of the ancient teachings of this practice. So honoring those ancient teachings this morning. Setting your intention as to finding that truth within you. We'll do a call and response chant this morning. It's a chant that means may all beings everywhere be happy and free and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. So we're gonna say it in Sanskrit and we'll do a call and response. 
So I'll say the first word and then you all chant that word. I'll say the second word and so on. And then we'll put it all mm -hmm. together. And then once we're done with the chant, we'll finish with OM. So take a full inhale and exhale it out. And then I'll start with the first word. Loka. Samasta. Samasta. Suki no. Suki no. Bhavantu. And all together. Loka. Samasta. Suki no. Bhavantu. And then inhale and we'll exhale with the Om. Oh. Begin rubbing your hands together. <clears throat> Generate a little bit of heat. And then bring one hand over your heart, the other hand over that hand, and just take a moment to feel the pulsing of your heart. The breath in your body. Two things that unify us, the earth <coughs> and the air we breathe. We all stand on the same earth, we all breathe the same air. And I'm sure that teaching is weaved in to MLK's teachings. And start to flicker the eyes open. <clears throat> a little bit at a time, just taking in the space, <laughs> taking in the room, noticing heat that generated in your body. Find your way to hands and knees to table top. <laughs> and as you find your way into table top, just start to notice how the belly feels as you breathe in and out and feeling that engagement in that low part of your belly. Have your knees just slightly apart so that your knees are in line with your hips. Have your hands, your fingers spread on the mat. Plug into the thumb, the index finger, and the tips of the third, fourth, fifth fingers. Your gaze is looking down just ahead of your fingertips so that your neck feels like an extension of your spine. Beautiful, as if I could come around with a tray, place it on your back and it wouldn't fall off. Feel strong, feel a little broadening across the backs of your shoulders, the upper back area. And see if you can even your distribution of the weight so that you're not dumping into the wrists. And then begin to make some organic circles. So lean forward, shoulders come past wrists. Take the hips over to the right. Circle them back by your heels. Come around to the left. You might hear a little Rice Krispies in your knees, <laughs> and that's just air escaping, stored air. So just continue making those movements to the right, big circles. And then when you come back to center, reverse the circle. And move with your breath. Start to find a rhythm matching breath with movement. 
And then finishing up the circle you're on, come back to neutral and extend the right leg behind you, coming up on your toes. And then push back so your right heel is dropping down toward the floor. Feel that beautiful stretch in the back of your right leg. And then inhale, rock forward. Exhale, drop the heel back down. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, drop the heel down. And then this inhale, we lift that right leg, hip height. So just maybe even take your left hand, place it on your sacrum. If that right hip is sticking up, encourage it back down, draw the belly in, left hand comes back down to the mat. Flex the right foot, toes pointing to the earth and push that heel toward the windows. And then inhale, left arm up by the ear, finding a spinal balance. Breathe in, no holding of the breath. The breath is deep and even. See if you can push the heel toward the windows a little bit more and reach the fingertips to me as if I could touch them. The palm facing this right side of the room. So when you turn the palm to face that wall, you should feel a little bit softening in the shoulder. And then lower the left hand down, cross the right leg behind you, keep the shoulders square, don't dump in the belly. And now turn the head to look over that left shoulder, see if you could catch a glimpse of your big toe of the right foot. Big side stretch for this right side. So trying to not collapse in the shoulders or the chest, just opening up this right side. And then inhale that right leg back up, lowering the knee down and push back for a child's pose just for a breath. So maybe just take it soft, not as deep. And then inhale back to tabletop, extend the left leg behind you coming up on your left toes and then drop that left heel down. Big stretch for the back of the left side, the left leg. And then inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back. And then inhale that leg up. Bring the right hand just to your sacrum, check in, making sure the hips are level. And what will help with that is turning the toes to the mat. Flex that left foot and push the heel to the windows. And then put the right hand back down if it's lifted. Bring that right arm by the right ear. So pressing, moving the leg and arm in an opposite direction. The heel is pushing toward the windows and turn your palm to face the TV. So you get that external rotation in the shoulder. Lower that right hand down, cross the left leg behind you. Keep the shoulder squared, try not to collapse in the chest or shoulders, and then turn your head to look over the right shoulder, finding your big toe. Breathe into that whole left side, feeling the breath fill up your rib cage. Finding a deep and even breath, and then Inhale that left leg back up. This time, take your knees wide, as wide as your mat, and bring your toes to touch. Push your seat back to your heels for a wide-legged child's pose. And dropping the heart toward the earth. 
having the arms extended out in front of you. So maybe feeling a little stretch in the shoulders and the upper back. And then inhale, lift up halfway. Take your right arm underneath mm -hmm. your left. Bring the right side of your face, your cheek down to the mat. So threading the needle here in child's pose. Left arm extended toward the top of your mat. Full breath in. Full breath out. Noticing where the breath is traveling to in your body. Inhale, press into that left hand to lift yourself up, bringing the right arm, extending it out in front of you, and then threading the left arm under the right, bringing the left side of the face to the mat, looking out at your right hand that's extended, sorry, the left arm extended under you, the right arm extending to the top of the mat. And feel the breath here, filling up the rib cage, maybe the low back, feeling it travel up, down, side to side front to back. Your next inhale, press into the right hand to help lift you up and stretch that left arm out in front. And then big inhale, lifts you up back to tabletop. Bring the wrists back under your shoulders, finding tabletop. And then inhale into cow pose. So cow pose, we lift the crown of the head, we tilt the tailbone up, we breathe in to the open heart space. And then exhale into cat pose. Cat pose, we draw the belly in even more, we round the spine, tuck chin to chest and tuck your tailbone. So moving to the count of four, inhale into cow, two, three, four, exhale into cat, two, three, four, inhale into cow, two, three, four, exhale into cat, two, three, four, inhale into cow, two, three, four, Exhale into cat, two, three, four, come to neutral. Extend both legs back, coming to our plank pose. Rock forward on your toes, drop your knees, rotate elbow creases to the front of the room and lower chin and chest, keeping your Sits bones lifted toward the sky. So like you're an inchworm. And then inhale, slide the body forward, coming onto your belly. Your hands are by your lowest set of ribs. Your legs are together, lengthening behind you. Tilt your pubic bone toward the mat and on an inhale, lift the upper body for a baby cobra. And then exhale, lower down, another inhale, lifting to cobra. And exhale, lower down. I wanna see the elbows hugging the side body like your bird wings. <laughs> so hands should be by the lowest set of ribs. So Karen, move your hands back. Move your hands back. So your elbows hugging tight. Feel the energy come from your legs. Your breath lifts your heart up. Beautiful. Your shoulders are away from your ears. You feel your shoulders stretching up by your ears, drawn back. Feel the shoulder blades moving toward each other in the back. And then last one, lower down, tuck your toes under, push your seat 
back to your heels. And then walk your hands back. Come up on your knees. Toes tucked under. All 10 toes reaching the mat. So a little stretch for the tops of our feet. Bring your hands to your hips. See if you can slowly lower your seat to your heels. <laughs> Hello, arches. Hello, toes. Hello, feet. Inhale, lift back up. Let's add the arms. Inhale the arms in front of you. Draw the arms into your shoulder <laughs> sockets. And now lower. Draw the belly in. Hold. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, lift. Now arms lift up. And exhale, lower seat to heels. Two, three, four, five, inhale, lift up, interlace your fingers, turn the palms to face up. See if you can lengthen the arms without scrunching your shoulders up by your ears and exhale, lower your seat towards your heels. Two, three, four, five, inhale, lift up. Float the arms out behind you, interlace the fingers, draw the knuckles to your sacrum, draw the chest up toward the sky as you move the shoulder blades toward each other in the back. Breathe in, breathe out. Bring your knuckles to your left hip, breathe in. Breathe out. Bring your knuckles through center and over to your right hip. Breathe in. Breathe out. Knuckles come to center. See if you can do one breath. We extend the arms behind you. Draw shoulders away from your ears. Chest lifts to the sky. And then release, shake them out. Come down to your seat and swing your legs out in front of you. Rock a little forward so the flesh moves away from your sit bones, legs extended. Bring hands alongside your hips, spreading your fingers, finding Dandasana staff pose. So you're gently pressing into the earth, feeling the lengthening in your spine. Engage your thighs, see if your heels lift up off the mat. Draw the belly in. Lengthening the spine, feel the energy move from the lower part of your back, up your back, up your spine, out to the crown of your head. And exhale, lower. Bring your feet to where your knees were, bring your hands behind you, setting up for reverse tabletop. So your fingertips point towards your bottom. Inhale as you lift your hips, finding reverse tabletop. So if your arms aren't straightening easily, you can place blocks under your hands and get that little extra height to help you be able to lift up. and right behind you. So arms are closer together. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then gaze can either be looking forward or the head can tilt back. See if you can lift those hips one more time. And then exhale, lower down. If you use blocks, move them to the side, draw the right knee into your chest. Step it over your left leg. Take your right hand behind you, turning the fingers out. Inhale, left arm up by the ear. Flex your left foot. Twist to the right. 
hooking that left elbow with the right knee, sitting up nice and tall. Try not to let yourself collapse in this. If you need a block under that right hand to help you lift up, modify as you need to. So this is that chant, set to music. I didn't miss the words already, but she is singing Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavan too. Beautiful lengthening of the spine on your inhale, moving into the twist a little bit deeper on your exhale. Twists cleanse us of toxins in our digestive system. On your next inhale, come through center, counter twist to the left. And then we'll release that right leg and draw the left knee into the chest, stepping it over the right leg, flex this right foot. Take the left hand behind you now, use it as a kickstand. Inhale the right arm up, twist to the left. Pressing into the toe ball mound of the left foot. So when you press that foot into that into the mat, it might help your pelvic area to find a little bit more space to feel grounded in your sits bones. As you inhale, feel the lengthening up as of your spine. The exhale deeper into the twist. Inhale, come through center, counter twist to the right. And then release, release that left leg, windshield wiper the feet. <clears throat> Slide the feet in, separate the feet as wide as your mat and windshield wiper the knees over to your right and then over to your left, over to the right, over to the left, over to the right, bring them over to the right, bring that left arm over, bend the elbows. Lowering down, deepening this twist. Inhale, lift up, lift that left arm over. Plant it behind you, windshield wiper the knees to the left and to the right. Over to the left, float that right arm up and over, bend at the elbows. <laughs> And then come back up, come back to center, cross at your ankles, roll forward, step the legs back, find plank, and then lower down to your forearms. So coming to a forearm plank, interlace your fingers, your elbows are directly under your shoulders, draw the belly in. So if you feel like you're sagging, if you feel like your bottom's too high, lower it down, find a long line of energy. And then begin to walk your feet in a little closer, lifting your hips up. The head comes between the arms for dolphins. Walk the feet back, find forearm plank. And then flip your toes to the tops of your feet and lower slowly, lower your knees, thighs, hips, and then bring your forearms out in front of you onto the mat. Check in with the distance between your elbows, maybe wrap your fingers around and make sure that it's the correct distance. Finding Sphinx pose. Begin to find some lengthening here.
Turning the pubic bone toward the mat. So you're lengthening that low back area and not finding that it's grasping or clenching. And your heart lifting up. Feel lengthening out through the legs. Another full inhale. And then exhale, lower down, slide your hands by your lowest set of ribs, tuck your toes under, push your seat back to your heels, slowly lift halfway. So lift your shins and knees off the mat. Push your low belly toward your thighs. And now slowly straighten your legs into downward facing dog. Breathe evenly and deeply here. Head between your biceps. Breathe in, breathe out. Your next inhale, feel the breath move from your heart to your sits bones, helping you lift into this upside down V. Feel the lengthening of your arms. So another breath from your heart down your arms. And then moving the breath from your heart to your sits bones. Lift your gaze, look between your hands, stay Come up on your toes and tiptoe your way to the front of the mat and lift up halfway. Find a flat back here. Draw the shoulders away from your ears. Bring your hands to your hips and your elbows moving toward each other and then press into your feet and lift with a flat back. Bring hands to heart center. Inhale them overhead. And then exhale, bring them back down through your heart center. Bend your knees a little bit, but lengthen through the spine as you fold forward. Low belly reaching the tops of your thighs, hands drop to the mat. And then straighten the legs to your edge in forward fold. So part of the ahimsa practice, the nonviolence, in the physical practice is being kind to our body. So finding our edge, letting go of expectation and accepting that where you are is your present moment. And then everybody deepen the bend in your knees, bring the fingertips on either side of your feet. Inhale, lift the arms up by the ears, finding chair pose. Exhale, hands to your heart center, twist to the right. Maybe that left elbow is reaching toward the right knee, but check in with your knees. If your left knee is moving forward, draw it back. Find that your knees are even. Inhale, arms to heart center. Bring the fingertips down, straighten the legs, come into Uttanasana, forward fold. Full breath in, full breath out, re-bend the knees. Inhale, arms up by the ears, finding chair. Hands to heart center, twist to the left. Maybe that right elbow is reaching toward the outside of the left knee, but keeping the knees in line with each other. So check in with the knees. If that right knee is moving forward, draw it back. Alignment being more important than how deep you're moving into a pose. Inhale the arms back to center. Straighten the legs, take the arms overhead a little arching back of the upper back, and then hands to heart center, 
spine mountain pose, Tadasana. Actually, everybody bring one hand over their heart, one hand, and then your other hand over that hand. Close your eyes. Inhale and audible sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> And then invite in your ujjayi breath. So inhaling through the nose. And your exhale, you're placing a constriction in the back of your throat as you exhale. Tune in to this breath and feeling the pulsating of your heart under your hand. And then open the eyes, inhale, float the arms overhead, and exhale, coming into forward fold, Uttanasana. Bend your knees, plant your hands, and step both feet back to plank pose. Rock forward on your toes, and then lower your knees. Turn the elbow creases to face forward. Hug the elbows in your side body as you lower your chest and chin down. Inhale, slide forward onto the belly. If you need to reposition your hands by your lowest set of ribs, just like we practiced before, inhale, lifting into cobra. And exhale, lower down, tuck your toes under, push your seat back to your heels. Lifting into downward dog, you can take it in steps. You can just lift the knees and shins. Bring that low belly to the tops of your thighs and then straighten the legs. Finding downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the right leg, three-legged dog. Try and level your hips. Flex that right foot, push the heel to the windows. So right foot hip level or up high? Yes, yeah. you wanna level your hip. So if you feel that right hip lifting up, level it out. And now draw the right knee into your chest as you round the spine. Inhale, lift it back up, three-legged dog. Exhale, draw the knee into your chest. Inhale, lift it back up, three-legged dog, and then lower that right leg down. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Find a leveling out of your hips. Flex that left foot, push the heel to the windows. And then exhale, draw the knee into your chest. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to the chest. Inhale, three-legged dog. One more time, exhaling knee into the chest. Inhale, three-legged dog, and then exhale that leg back down, downward facing dog. Look between your hands. Walk the feet up to the top of your mat. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. We're gonna go into low lunge. So move your blocks to outside your feet if you wanna modify with blocks. So everybody coming to a half lift, find that flat back. If you're using blocks, bring the hands to the blocks, bend the knees and then shoot that right leg far back. So that right leg is fully extended. Your right heel is lifted. Feel the length of your spine and then drop that right knee down. Uncurl the toe, inhale, lifting up. Hands come to left thigh. Draw your hips to your midline and then inhale, arms up by the ears. Exhale, cactus arms. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, cactus arms. 
Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, cactus arms. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, cactus arms, and then bring the elbows in front of your face. And open. Inhale, bringing the elbows toward each other. Exhale, open. One more time. Soften your shoulders. And open, straighten the arms. And then reach forward, lengthen your spine as you bring your arms, your hands to the blocks or the mat. Tuck the right toes under, lift that right leg, keep the right hand planted on that block and lift your left arm up, coming into a twist. Breathe in, breathe out. So this left arm is lifting straight up. The palm is facing the TV. So flip, turn the palm to face the TV. Soften that left shoulder. Exhale, left hand down. Move the blocks to the side. Step the left leg back, find plank pose. So either go right into downward dog, or take a vinyasa, lowering knees, chest, chin. Inhale, slide forward onto the belly. Coming into cobra. Exhale, bring your seat back to your heels. We all meet in downward facing dog. Look between your hands and walk your feet up to the top of your mat. And inhale, lift up halfway. If you use blocks for the other side, Bring the blocks on either side of your feet. Bending the knees, shoot that left leg all the way back for low lunge. Right knee finding a 90 degree angle. Then drop left knee down, uncurl the toe. Bring shoulders, stacking them in line with your hips, hands to right thigh. So breathe here for a moment to find your center and then floating the arms up. Interlace the fingers, bring them behind the head, cradling the head. See if you could take the elbows out a little wider, lifting the chest up to the sky. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. On your exhale, release. Reach the arms forward. That lengthening of the spine as you bring your hands down. Tuck the left toes under to lift back to low lunge. Left hand stays planted. Lift the right arm up. Coming into a twist on this side. Breathe in, breathe up. Try not to collapse into your left shoulder so that left arm is lengthening, your breath traveling across your open heart, out through your right fingertips, and then exhale, lower that right hand down. Step the right leg back, find plank. Push back into downward facing dog. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale, lifting right leg to three-legged dog. Draw that right knee into your chest and set that right foot forward, just be behind your hands. And then drop your left heel down. <clears throat> Bend the right knee, float the arms up behind you. So you feel like your belly is resting on that right thigh. And now on your next inhale, sweep the arms up. Find warrior one. So arms coming up by the ears, beautiful. Keeping that right knee bending. Left leg fully extended, really pressing into the outer edge of that left foot. 
hips facing, knee, heart shining forward. Maybe turn the corners of your mouth up. <laughs> One more full breath in, breathing in, maybe using that word ahimsa to carry on your breath. Exhale, float the arms down. Step the right leg back, find downward facing dog. Full breath in and out. Inhale, lifting left leg up, three-legged dog. Draw the left knee into your chest, step that left foot forward right behind your hands and then drop the right heel down. So bend the left knee, feel like your body, your belly is resting on that left thigh, float the arms behind you. Superman arms, draw the shoulders away from your ears. Keep that left knee bent, inhale, sweep up, warrior one. Right leg, full extension, left knee bending toward a 90 degree angle. Check in with your left knee. If you can't see your big toe, Move your left knee toward your pinky. So. Hips facing forward, heart shining forward. Exhale, lower hands down to the mat, stepping that left leg back, finding downward facing dog. And then everybody lower your knees down taking them wide, bring your toes to touch, finding child's pose. Yep, big audible sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> if your head isn't comfortably coming down to the mat, slide a block under your forehead. <laughs> Let your arms be soft. So the arms are extended out in front of you. and then soften. Let your elbows be soft. Finding a deep and even breath. Slowly rolling up to having your seat on your heels, rocking off onto that hip so you can swing the legs around in front of you and then coming onto your backs, drawing the knees into your chest. Rock from side to side, feel that massage on your low back, on your sacrum. So essentially, child's pose on your back. So feel the back, all areas of your back making contact with the mat. Lower your feet down to the mat. Bring your hands onto your thighs and then slide your hands down so the bottom your the base of your palm is pushing right into where your thigh meets your hip crease and just gently press in and push up a little bit you just got a chiropractic adjustment for free <laughs> and release. Press into your feet, lift your hips about an inch up, 
Shift your hips over to the right. Drop your low back, your sacrum down to the mat. Now draw your knees into your chest and roll them down. Let them drop down to this left side, coming into our revolve <clears throat> abdomen twist, just being mindful of your neighbor. Left hand can rest on top of that right knee, but hopefully you can find space to extend the right arm straight out. You want it to extend out from your shoulder. <laughs> so make room for your neighbor, maybe practicing nonviolence. <laughs> if there's any tightness or discomfort in the low back, you can slide a block in between your thighs and that should help. Find a deep and even breath here. The gaze looking up or out over your right arm, and the palm should flip up of this right arm to help the right shoulder to soften. Close your eyes for this last breath and really tune in to the breath moving through the body in this twist. Can you soften your jaw, your brow? On your next inhale, feel the breath gather in your belly as you lift the knees to center, dropping the feet down to the mat and adjust your spine back to neutral. Same adjustment for the other side, press into your feet, lift your hips about an inch off the mat, shift the hips to the left, then lower the low back down, hug the knees all the way into your chest and then drop the knees down. So that adjustment helps the alignment of our spine be in the correct position for the twist to protect our low back. As best you can, extend that left arm straight out from the shoulder, turning the palm to face up to encourage that left shoulder to soften. The right hand can rest on top of the left knee. Maybe a block slides in between the thighs. And then see if you can close your eyes here and Tune into your breath. In order to connect with our inner light, we have to have moments of stillness, of having a single focus to invite in more quiet, We've all suffered in one way or the other, past traumas. Those layers cover our inner light. Your next inhale, bring the knees to center, dropping feet to the mat, adjust your spine back to neutral, hug the knees into your chest. <clears throat> Lift your forehead up to your knees, breathe into the back of your neck. Slowly lower the head back down, drop the feet to the mat. Heel toe your feet a little wider so <clears throat> your feet come to the outer edges of your mat. 
have a comfortable distance between your feet and your sit bones. And then see if you can let the knees just drop toward each other, resting comfortably against each other, no effort. And then bring your hands to your low belly. So moving into our rest. Let's move into this with a little pranayama. So just following your breath with the count of four. So empty your breath out fully. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. We'll add a retention at the top now. Inhale, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Continue like that if you want, or you can let that <laughs> breath work go and just resume finding your natural breath. You can keep your knees bent if this feels good for your low back. This feels good to find rest, or you can straighten your legs out at any time. Into corpse pose. Ahimsa 
is the first of the 10 yamas. Translates to nonviolence. But it also stands for living a life of kindness and compassion for yourself, others, and the world around you. Nonviolence is so valued, it stands at the very core and foundation of yoga. Another quote by Martin Luther King reads, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Start to deepen your breath and invite small movements back in, wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. circling your wrists and ankles. Inhaling the arms overhead, long stretch. Draw the knees into your chest, rolling onto one side or the other and just breathing there, inviting in a Deep breath before you come up so that you don't come up lightheaded. When you're ready, lifting up to a comfortable seat, keeping the eyes closed or at a soft gaze, bringing your hands to your heart center, rubbing the hands together. <clears throat> Feeling that heat generate in your palms and then bring the hands over the eyes, not touching the eyes, but just feeling that energy. Then lowering your hands over your heart, bowing your head, recalling your intention toward nonviolence. With this number in the room today, if each one of you touches someone else with an act of nonviolence, extending love and compassion, and then all those people do the same, just think of the ripple effect. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. It is always just an honor and privilege to be here leading you in this practice. Bring your hands to your heart center. Take a moment to thank yourself for being here. And let's seal the practice with one ohm. So inhale, exhale it out all the way. <sighs> oh. Namaste. Namaste. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful week. Namaste. Anybody take a count? No. Joyce, what do you count? Should we do it like classroom style? Yeah. <laughs> Our friends online, thank you so much for joining us. You'll have to unmute if you want to. Yeah, there you go. I'm I'm flying in on Saturday. On Sunday, great. Bring, bring the warmer weather with you. Saturday, yeah. <laughs> no, it's supposed to warm up. So it, it's warmer there than it is here. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and I see Anthony. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Nancy.
Thanks for having the Zoom. I would have been a little crowded in there. It was, I think, 31 or 32. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. You all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thursday meditation. Bye bye. Okay, bye.